Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be talking about spatial database systems and their types. As you know that everything in GIS has to go inside a database and the database which in GIS we use we call as a spatial database. The concept of uh, all these are the almost same as the other databases which exist and the most uh, common database uh, which is used in GIS is RDA. Uh, RDBMS that is relational database management system, but uh, there are other types of databases are also used in GIS. So, we will go through one by one and uh, also as you know that uh, uh, file systems and uh, uh, earlier uh, file systems were being used and now we are uh, going slowly slowly or moving towards the databases. So, what we are going to discuss in this lecture is the what is database how uh, what it uh, does and uh, uh, how it works and uh, how to design a special database, how it is important, why, why uh, we should uh, uh, take all cares before uh, we put we put start putting the data into the GIS database and uh, how modern databases evolve from files and file systems because earlier systems when computer started coming we uh, we are keeping things in file systems, still many people uh, keeps in file system, but not in GIS and about uh, flaws, what are the disadvantages, demerits of file system, what are the advantages of DBMS, database management system and uh, also about different types of databases which have been implemented into GIS. So, all this uh, we will discuss uh, in this particular lecture, as you know that uh, our uh, GIS, what GIS does is uh, it converts your data into information and then ultimately information to knowledge. But before that we have to keep the data inside the system. So, uh, data as we know say is the one of the major components of GIS, out of 5 components one of the important components of GIS is data. So, we have to uh, take care about that very carefully we have to organize our data into the GIS software and, uh, and uh, that uh, because if data we organize correctly we should be able to retrieve it efficiently and during analysis and modeling this all will help if we have organized correctly. And uh, as you know that information reveals meaning of data and a good timely relevant information is key to decision makings and good decision making is the key to organization survival. So, if it everything depends how data has been organized in a organization, in a setup or in a company. Now, database say uh, as you know uh, there might be a possibility of sharing a database nowadays this is one of the very common thing, but what to what extent the sharing is that means the security aspect, access aspects we will also touch upon that. Then uh, uh, how uh, the integration is done of the database and uh, who are the users and uh, one more important uh, uh, term which is mentioned here is metadata. Metadata in GIS or in other uh, systems are uh, very, very important because metadata means the data about the data or information about the data. So, for example, if I have uh, gone in the field and collected say groundwater level data from different observation wells, now I, I need to record the time when the data was collected and uh, who has collected the data and uh, all kinds what kind of instrumentations I have used to measure the groundwater level. All kinds of relevant information about the data has to be stored as metadata and uh, many times whenever you download a satellite image from internet free satellite images, you will also see that uh, apart from a uh, TIFF file, you also find a file which is MAT. This is not meteorological data, this is, this is the normal convention is used for metadata. So, the, this contains all the information about from which satellite, which sensor, which date, what were the coordinates of sun and so on and so forth, all that information uh, will go in the MAT data. So, it is always a good practice whoever is uh, developing data or analyzing data into the GIS, modifying the data, 
that all the information should be recorded in the metadata file. So, metadata is very, very important in GIS 2 and database management systems, the purpose here to manage the data structure, database structure and also uh, control the access to the data, whether all the people can have all the access to the data or some people or a mere, there may be a hierarchical system and so and so forth. And then a database should also support a query language. Because by putting certain uh, questions to the system, you should be able to retrieve the data. So, this query language is very much required and this is a typical database management system uh, which we are seeing here. Now, make data managements are more efficient and effective if you organize the data when you, you create the perfect structure and then put the data, then you would be only able to efficiently uh, retrieve the data. Query language allows quick answers to ad hoc queries whenever there might be some queries which are systematic every time you are retrieving sometimes it is just a certain information you want to retrieve from that database. So, ad hoc queries should also be allowed by your system and then provide better access to more and better managed data promotes integrated view of organizations operations and reduce the reduces the probability of inconsistent data. Here also the purpose here is that we should not have redundancy in our data and uh, there should not be inconsistency in data. Inconsist inconsistency means basically here is that uh, if, uh, if you are keeping the same data at two places within one database management system, you have upgraded one, you have not upgraded another one or automatically it has not been upgraded, then there will be inconsistency and then it will lead to the uh, wrong analysis and uh, poor decisions. So, these things should be avoided in a, uh, in a normal practice. How you know database manage uh, the interactions basically you are having a database management system in that center, you are having end users and you are having uh, you know this kind of uh, structure database structure that you are having metadata and if it is related with the sales or business then you would be having customers, invoices, products and again end user data and then there is an interaction of different people with the database management system. So, this is what uh, how the interactions within the database happens. Now, what are the uh, good practices which should be followed while designing a database that uh, you know the because if you design poorly, then there will be data redundancy which I have just touched upon and uh, we have also discussed this uh, data redundancy in especially in case of raster data and therefore, we look for the data compression. But here the data redundancy mainly in case of say textual data or some other numeric values, data redundancy may be that uh, two places the same data is being stored and updated for uh, no advantages and uh, poor design generate errors which may lead to the bad decision. And the, the practical approaches are that uh, we should follow the principles and concept of database design and uh, also uh, follow this uh, logical design uh, system. Now, uh, there are as you know that uh, uh, this is not very new, even before the invention of GIS, the concept of database management systems were there. So, first uh, you know uh, we thought that instead of using uh, analog files, we started using digital files. So, the initially the concept was concentrated mainly on the clerical task and therefore, the file systems were developed initially later on the database management systems were developed and request for information which were quickly followed file systems to address needs, data organized according to expected use and in file system data processing specialist computerized manual file system. So, this though they are there were these were the digital files, in initially they were analog files converted into digital files, but since there were no uh, database management system and therefore, the query ad hoc queries or regular queries or retrieving information was still not efficient. And uh, as uh, uh, you will also realize that uh, when uh, while using computer sometimes we keep information in simple separate files and therefore, it becomes very difficult to retrieve appropriate information. 
and all kinds of problems will come. Now, uh, whenever we use the database, there are certain terms which we use in database like data which are nothing but the raw facts and uh, then we use a, a, in, a in GIS database as a, I was discussing in attributes data, I said that we can think as a tabular data. So, when we are having a, a tabular data, then we this, these are the things which we call as fields or columns and these are the which we call as rows we call as records in database uh, languages. So, now this uh, fields or group of characters with a specific meaning. These fields are columns in a tabular database and these we define the properties we define according to our uh, data which is going to come inside these columns. So, therefore, uh, these are the very important thing the properties especially to define and then record as I have already mentioned that these uh, rows are records which are logically connected fields that describe a person, place or a thing. And then overall everything is stored in a file. So, we use this term file as well, which is a collection of related records. Now, if we look a same sales, uh, uh, sales uh, scenario and uh, in a file system, then this is how things are kept uh, completely separately and hardly there are linkages. Uh, so, there is a customer then there are that department, then the sales department is having customer and sales files and then personal department is having agent. That means the information is there within an organization, but information is lying in isolation and it is sometimes when we want to retrieve the information from one section of a organization to another, one department from another, then this integration is not possible. Retrieval of information from one department to another is not possible if it has not been organized in a typical database. If it is organized in file system, this is what it will happen. So, the what are the bad things about file systems uh, that it requires extensive programming in third generation language. And in order to access the information or data, it is also time consuming and makes ad hoc queries impossible. You cannot just uh, raise certain questions to the system or file system and you will get the answer or you will get the data. No, it is not uh, possible. And then I, uh, leads to island of information. It is nothing but the redundancy that information is lying in, a, in your file system, but uh, I am unable to retrieve it. And this is what we call island of information. So, the, these are the problems in a uh, file system. And uh, this continues that uh, uh, this is a file system is also dependent on the data, which uh, if I change the file name, and uh, then everything I have to take care because that file name might be being used elsewhere as well. So, accordingly then modifications in the program must take place and makes file system cumbersome from programming and data management uh, views. And uh, this is a structural dependence is also there in file system. The change in file system requires modification of related programs. So, every time you change something in the file or naming in the file or you add some new file, then again in the programs you have to change. So, this is not a good practice. But uh, th these are the earlier things and uh, what are the best thing which has happened in case of data manage, manage, management system which we will see. So, this is field definition and naming conventions that is also limited and uh, flexible. It is not flexible and uh, selection of proper field name are very important in file system. And attention to length of fields and use of unique record identity that means the lot of, th lot of things have to be care and taken care while if we are using a file system. Now, this uh, data redundancy I have already discussed that data redund redundancy islands of information is a big problem in file system results of uncontrolled data redundancy and uh, whenever we modify the data, insert the data, deletion of the data may bring the anomalies in the data and data inconsistency is also there because the data has not been properly integrated. So, lack of data integrity. 
whereas in database management system which is based on the logical related data is stored in a single repository. So, in a one system or one repository it has been stored may not be exactly one system, but uh, maybe nowadays we go for clouds and other systems. So, uh, but uh, everything is controlled in a manner the data uh, can be retrieved very efficiently and one of the best examples of nowadays uh, online database management system which we see access is uh, like a database of IRCTC for Ra Indian railway reservations which is really in my opinion it is very complex database, but uh, it is quite user friendly and a, a person who know who knows about little bit about the computers can use the database and can book the trains. So, that kind of uh, products when are created then they become very popular and highly useful as IRCTC program. The same uh, that it uh, because database management uh, provides advantages over file systems, what are those advantages that eliminates inconsistency of data. It also eliminates data anomalies, islands of data, a de data dependency is also eliminated and a structural dependency a problem is also gone if we go for database management system and a store data structures relationship and access paths that is another advantage uh, with the database management. So, if we take the same example of a, a organization which is in business for sales and other things, then here with the database management system every other section or department is connected and then every information is kept in a single repository. And therefore, then uh, compared to this database system you see in the file systems they are the information is lying in isolation and therefore, the information retrieval data retrieval becomes difficult. Now, in generally in database management system what are the hardwares or softwares the different components that you are having hardware, you are having your data, hard disk and computers, end users will have their own computers and you follow certain procedures and standards which all and large enterprises organizations go for such a procedures and standards and then you are having application programs which will allow you to retrieve the data, interact with the database and uh, update the database by different people and uh, then there will be control of the access uh, through a system administrator that means end user may not have access to the full data, but analyst might be having access to certain type of data and so on so forth. Database management systems there are different types of uh, concepts exist with the database management system that is the single user versus multi user database, multi user database. Uh, uh, systems are now most popular example I have given already of like IRCTC or some banking organizations database like uh, SBI online that is also a multi user database very user friendly and uh, it is having various uh, options various uh, you know capabilities are available uh, for us for transactions or you know using uh, that uh, database for various purposes. Now, uh, there, uh, there may the system if we go on hardware basis then you might have a database on desktop, maybe in a workstation, work group, enterprise, online, centralized, distributed all kinds of uh, options nowadays are available with the database and it is not necessary even that a, a entire repository is being kept in one country, there might be in multiple countries and uh, it is connected and you are accessing the data. So, generally people are going for multi user database and distributed database because there are certain advantages with distributed database and uh, production and uh, or uh, uh, transactional use like uh, transactional I have given the example of banking organization database and uh, also data warehouse and other things are there. Now, what are the functions of database uh, management systems that uh, data dictionary management, data storage management, data transportation presentation, security aspects nowadays has become very big issue. So, that has to be taken care multi user access control who would use what, how, who would access what, how to, what depth they can access and so on. 
Another very important thing with all kinds of database is the backup and recovery management because anything can happen anytime. There might be some accident, there might be some breakage or problem with the system and uh, maybe fire or some flooding or other scenario. So big organization nowadays, they keep a, a, you know this uh, backup system very nicely. Maybe two parallel systems, one may be in say an example in Delhi, another one might be far in Chennai. So that if something happens in Delhi, at least uh, the Chennai system will work. And this is how these big uh, database uh, databases which we are using as a simple end user, uh, these are how this is how these are being maintained. And the backup has to be taken most of the time it is simultaneously and there should be a very good recovery management. Something goes wrong so that we should be able to recover the data because the millions of people uh, information especially in banking system database is there which is very very important related with finance. Data integrity management, data language and application programming interfaces, end user may not be aware about this thing but uh, on the administrator and these are the things which has to be ca taken care. Then database communication interfaces here on uh, whether you are accessing the data on your mobile or on your computer or even in the field or uh, through internet or staying abroad, all kinds of these accesses, communications, interfaces have to be developed. Now as you know that in database uh, management system, uh, it is a collection of logical construct which is used to represent data structure and relationship within the data, database. And these uh, conceptual models may be logical nature of data representation or may implementation models which emphasize on how the data are represented in database. So various ways of uh, you know going in this database. Now from GIS, especially from GIS perspective, particularly about how in GIS uh, we are linked and related, then uh, this, uh, uh, this is very important that uh, there might be a uh, based on relationship the conceptual models which we can think of about DBMS is one to, ma one, to one, one to many and many to many. So this, these kind of at per, as per our requirements we can have uh, different options available in terms of relationships especially the relational database which is just coming. So these are the implement, implementation database models which have been implemented in GIS and uh, extensively especially the relational one and the network one and which are having lot of advantages and therefore these are the most two very common uh, database management system which has become sort of special database management system and have been implemented in most of the GIS softwares. Another thing is uh, with the GIS nowadays that all our modern GIS softwares or these concept also support access to the external database management. So you not only the database which is within your organization which you are having access but you can also have access to other databases if the access has been provided by the administrator. So those are the things which have to be. So we will go one by one on this that uh, first is a hierarchical database uh, which is a, uh, logically represented by an upside down tree as name implies there is a hierarchical system. Each parent can have many children. So it is one to many and uh, each child has one only one parent. So if we go upward then only one parent. And uh, I have taken example of a typical department and some names I have put there but it is uh, having just uh, these are names no other meaning here. And what we see when we put uh, this uh, uh, in hierarchical database uh, data model, then this is how the flow chart would be that at the top we are having institute, then each institute might be having several departments and then these departments are having students, professors and courses. But uh, here as you can see there is a hierarchical system, one type of system which exists but uh, there is no linkage between students and courses and therefore uh, if a student of one department 
would like to attend the course of another department, then there is no linkage is available. If we see in a uh, you know in a proper structure form, then uh, the field name here is uh, institute name, then uh, it is comes a Rurki, IIT Rurki, then department taken example because I come from earth sciences, so I have taken example of earth science department and uh, you know number of students, professors and and uh, staff and other things, then you are having a student records, you are having professor records, you are having courses records. But as I have said, if a student of our science would like to take a course of civil engineering or say mathematics, then there are no information can be in built in this type of hierarchical database. So, what are the advantages with hierarchical database that it is conceptually it is very simple, database security and integrity is there and uh, data independence. So, one data in one file is completely independent of another file and uh, efficiency is also there because hardly there are any linkages or anything. Disadvantage is that when we would like to implement then the implementation part is complex, difficult to manage and lack of standards. Because uh, once a new data will new data set will come or something new has is to be required, then you will have problems. Lack of structural dependence, application programming and uh, uh, use complexity are there, and then implementations limitations are there. Complex implementation and uh, that too is limited. Now the second type of database management system, which is one of the very popular and especially for the vector data, line data which is used for different kind of networks. If you recall the history of GIS and uh, the invention of GIS by Roger Tomlinson, he started initially thinking about the networks because the task was given him for the network and therefore, most of the GIS softwares are quite rich on uh, this, uh, this in these concept or especially about the network related because uh, there might be a management of uh, a network uh, through which the resources are flowing, maybe natural network like a stream network, maybe transport or maybe railways or all kinds of things are there. In a network database, each record can have multiple parents. So, that is the difference in, in, in each previous example, a parent uh, can have multiple children, but here each record can have multiple parents and composed of sets, each set has owner record and member record and member have several owners. Mm -hmm. And the same example, but uh, in a network data model, this is how it looks that departments are now having linkage with the courses and then there is another uh, you know section or records have been created which is the registration of a students. So, when the students register for a particular subject then for a course of another department can be taken by those students and this is what the normal practice is being followed in institute like ours. So, they the advantage here that now there is a linkage and therefore, uh, a complete network is available through which the data can flow. Now, let us see the advantages. Advantages is conceptually it is also simple like hierarchical handles more relationship types, it can handle more relationship, data access flexibility there, promotes data weight integrity in case of uh, file based or system or hierarchical system this uh, was lacking and data independence is there and conformance of standards, at least some standards can be followed. Disadvantage is that system is, uh, is complex and lack of structural independence. Now, the third database or last one in this one is the relational database or RDBMS which is the most popular one and extensively it has been implemented in GIS. So, what it is, it is perceived by user as a collection of tables for data storage. I gave this example that most of the time we keep in uh, these tables and then tables are a series of row and column interactions as you can see and tables related by sharing common entities and current. This is uh, on this uh, point I would like to emphasize little more that whenever you would like to relate one table with another that is why it is called relational database. So, there is a one table, there is another table, now I want to relate and I will be showing through view graph some examples as well. So, for this relationship between uh, two tables or two databases, there has to be a common entity. 
that means there has to be a common field which is present in both the files or both the tables and having the uh, identical properties. So, if there is a common uh, entity or common co uh, column is there having say for example, ID. So, here I might be having a ID field here, another table I might be having for the same area I might be having ID field. So, when this is common and same system of uh, identifying different objects have been followed, then I can relate this table with another table. So, this is what it is meaning is that the tables related by sharing common entity characteristic. Characteristics here means the properties of that field has to be the same. Now, let us take the example is a that I am having a, a, a map which is having 4 polygons here and I am having corresponding attribute table. For each polygon there are a lot uh, some information like map ID is there, area is there, perimeter is there, stand number is there. Now, I want to relate this table of this map with another table which is, uh, which is also having uh, same polygons, but attributes are different. Here attributes are uh, that I am uh, the stand number is common, but I am having uh, species information dominant species and their age. So, now what we are seeing here in these two tables that at least one field is common and once it is there then I can relate it. If it is not there then relational database may not work in that way. So, what we are seeing here in this particular example that the strand number J127 is also common here and elsewhere the, the same records are not being reflected does not matter, but if I relate with this that data will be whatever is the common may come in a new table or in the same table and then later on we can store that information. So, that is the advantage of relational database that any time information may be lying in different tables you can think in this way in a, in digital tables I am talking, but whenever I want to relate if a, one field is common I should be able to relate very successfully. So, this, this gives a lot of advantages in uh, also in the GIS, this kind of concept of database management gives lot of advantages in GIS because we will be using in real GIS operations many maps which are having uh, polygons or other uh, vector features. So, there we it is very much required to have a relational database management system. Now, what are the advantages? structural independence, improved conceptual simplicity, easier database design, implementation and management use. So, these are the easier things ad hoc courage capabilities with SQL and powerful database management system. That is why it has become one of the most popular database management system. One of the best examples like Oracle is a RDBMS earlier we used to have DBase, SciBase and all kinds of database management system which are almost uh, uh, fall in this category of relational database management system. Now, disadvantages substantial hard and the system software overhead expenses are there, the design um, may be poor design implementation however, implementation is easy and uh, may promote island of information problems. Why again? Because in several tables the same information might be there. So, in one table you have updated, in another table you have not updated and therefore, you may encounter this kind of problem which is island of information. Thank you very much.